All right, through the magic of video, I now have all five of these horizontal pieces going across my tower. The glue is drying. In fact, you'll find that the glue starts to turn kind of an orangish, almost a brownish color uh, versus the almost white color when it first is uh, comes out of the jar. And you can kind of see it's sort of skinning over here a little bit. It's a little bit, I, I don't know that I would uh, recommend right away you go on to the next step, but since I'm pretty good at this and since I want to finish this video. I'm going to move on to cutting angles. Although there's a few things uh, I realized I had not mentioned. Number one, OMG, I didn't put my name on this thing. You want to put your name. Uh, and, and again, you could put it in pencil, but <clears throat> you got to remember over on the shelves on the side of the room, there's going to be 30, maybe 40 of these things. And uh, there might be 10 or, or 12 that are the exact same design as yours. So if you have it, I would use a Sharpie or a pen or something where you can really write your name nice and big. There's my first name. There's my second name. We'll pretend I'm in period three. Okay, so that's nice and big for me to be able to see <clears throat> when I go to pull it off of the shelf. Uh, because, again, somebody else might have that exact same design. I've actually had students be working on a tower for the better part of a period and go, oh my goodness, I'm working on Susie's tower and I'm actually Amy. And uh, that's a that's a problem when you work on somebody else's stuff. Okay, so that would be number one, the name and period number. Another thing I wanted to point out, did you notice uh, that these members, I mean, it's pretty obvious these ones here have to go in between. They're not laying on top and going across like that. You can see that goes across the beams. These are in between. So are these ones in the bottom. And sometimes I've seen people try to put it like this. So it's across the bottom of these beams here. No, no, no. You want to make sure it goes in between the beams like here and here, um, not across the top like that. That makes it a little too long and uh, just it's kind of cheating, to be honest with you. All right. So that would be the second thing I wanted to uh, to check with you. And before I go and start cutting uh, diagonals and, and doing things like angles here, I just wanted to show you one of the other designs because it offers some interesting uh, challenges when it comes to starting this. Once again, with my design here, you can see a student built a truss just like this. OK, a little bit crooked, but that's OK. So you would tape down your two beams here. Once again, probably a piece of tape about here and here holding down those beams. But remember how back on this one, I put pieces of tape like here at the bottom, okay? Well, if you put a piece of tape right here on this design, it's gonna be right in the way of that joint and get glued. So in this case, you might put a tiny piece of tape here and a tiny piece of tape here and leave the middle open. Remember, there's a bad spot to tape it. Uh, there's a bad spot to tape it because those are all places right here, of course, where the glue is going to, um, you know, there's going to be a joint there. Like I say, if you had a piece of tape stuck between this piece of wood and the glue and, and that joint there, it's just going to be a mess and, and kind of be a nightmare. Okay. So something I wanted to point out because this design is a little different. By the way, this one only has the bottom and top piece going across and then it has this really long piece going down the middle. So they had to cut a piece of balsa about eight inches long and make sure that it butted nice and tightly here at the bottom and at the top, nice and tight. And then I'm sure that person went ahead and started cutting these angles and putting these pieces in. OK, but like I say, there's four of these designs. Each one has its own little challenge. And it's kind of interesting to see what other people are doing and which towers might end up being strongest because of those designs. All right. Well, let's go back to the one I started. Got my name on it now. I'm quite sure that my uh, top and bottom horizontal pieces are even and in between my things. So now I'm going to start working on angles. Angles are a little tricky, and I may have to zoom in here uh, just to get you the idea. Um, first thing I'm probably going to do is I've got a kind of a long piece of balsa here. I would cut it a little bit shorter, like I don't even have to be too accurate. I'm just going to get my balsa chopper. And I know I want it about so long. I don't have to be fancy about it. But smaller pieces are easier to deal with. And then I'm going to take this guy and I'm just going to kind of guess. I'm going to cut a little bit of an angle. And once again, with my balsa cutter here, if I take my piece of balsa and hold it like this, 
it'll cut an angle. So if I take that angle and I put it here, up here, once again, oops, getting in my way here. I'll take a pencil and I'll draw a little line like that. Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit better. I drew a line like that. And I'll cut that on my balsa cutter. This might take a minute. This is actually a little trickier than just cutting the straight across pieces. But if I do it right and I'm nice and accurate, I should be able to get that guy pretty close. There you go. Let me zoom out. You can see I've got a little bit of space there, maybe a little more than I'd normally like, but that's all together, not too shabby. It's still pretty much over that pencil line there or the line on the pattern. I've got that guy like that. Give myself a little tiny piece of tape, stick that guy down, and he'll be ready for gluing, okay? What I would do is probably this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. Let's zoom out one more space and then do these guys last. Okay, so I got a couple more angles that I need to cut. I suppose I could just start with a long piece with an angle here. Something like this. There's my pencil mark. Cut this guy close. Another thing I can do, another trick, as you can see, I've got that mark right there, is use the old sandpaper trick and just kind of drag it on the sandpaper until I've got a pretty good angle right there and see if that guy fits right in there. Ooh, it's a little tight. Maybe it'll fit over on this one. Ooh, just a little tight. I'll fix it on the sandpaper. So some people like using the chopper. Honestly, I like using the chopper a little bit better. Uh, than the sandpaper, but as long as you're getting a nice, accurate thing. What if I turn it this way? Oh, yeah, that's much tighter. Look at that. super de duper All right. So, little tiny piece of tape. Hold these guys in. They're a little less likely to move around because these pieces are already taped and glued, but as a rule, I like to put at least one little piece of tape on everything. Now, right there would be a terrible place to tape it because there's going to be a joint there eventually. All right, maybe put one on either side like so. Hold that guy nice and straight. And as I did before, a little squirt of glue. About yay much. By the way, I'm putting the glue on the wax paper, not the paper paper. Makes it a little easier to clean up later. And scoop that glue right in there. Get that in there. Oh, yeah. This is going to come out nice. I can tell. Remember, like most things, neatness counts. Now, you don't have to be the neatest person in the world. I have messy handwriting. But if I slow down and take my time and put some care into things, I can usually do a pretty nice job. Get that glue in there nice and neat. You don't want to use too little glue because, of course, it's the strength of the glue that's holding your pieces together. All right. And I would do something similar for the rest of these angles. And uh, before long, I should have a truss that looks something like this. Okay. Let's say I finish this entire first side. What I would do is very carefully, after all the glue is dried, after all the pieces have been glued, I would very carefully peel away all these tiny pieces of tape. And then I would peel off that truss without breaking it. Again, maybe using a ruler as kind of like a spatula to peel it off. I would take this truss and with a Sharpie or pen, pencil is not good enough. I'm gonna say it again, pencil is not good enough. I would write my name in Sharpie right here on the wide part on the beam, because it's easier. I've seen people try to write their name in Sharpie on this skinny edge right here. It doesn't work very good, I promise you. All right, so write your name and take this truss and maybe tape it down on your board somewhere over here. 
That one's done, but you have to make two identical ones. So your pattern is still underneath this wax paper. Sometimes you can reuse the wax paper. Sometimes you get a second piece to uh, if this one tears or whatever, and you make a second truss. Almost guarantee the second time through it should go a little faster. Now that you've gotten better at using the balsa chopper and measuring and cutting and, and getting all of these pieces uh, together. All right. So get your first side done with all of your horizontals and all of your angles. Let the glue dry and then peel the truss off. Make sure you label it. And again, taping it down to your board means you're not likely to lose it. OK, so even if it has your name on it, there are so many uh, balsa towers being built in this room at any given time that you want to make sure that you have your first and last name and period number written somewhere on this truss uh, as you are building it. Okay, so that takes us to uh, a spot where I'm just going to probably uh, leave you working until we have two sides and I'll show you some tricks or hacks that I've learned through the years for putting the two sides together with the connecting sides. Um, because you can make two beautiful trusses and if you put the two sides together in, wrong it, it's going to come out uh, a very sad looking tower that's not going to hold very much weight okay so remember to cut these angles as tight as you can using either the balsa chopper the balsa chopper or the sandpaper trick and uh good luck and i will show you a few new tricks in the next section of this video